Hi, this is Benny from Seal of the Living God Ministry. I just want to thank you all for joining us today. Um, just a little bit of insight. Uh, I want to provide a little bit of details as far as what this ministry is about. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to provide part one of two parts where I'm going to describe a little bit about myself, my background, where I've been, uh, how I've come here, how the Lord is blessed. And then part two will be the second part of that, how I'll share uh, our experience, my wife, myself, and our children, and how God called us out of the city um, into the first stage of leaving towards the country. So um, what I want to do right now is just explain what Seal of the Living God Ministry is all about. Um, what we're looking to do is provide Bible-based Bible studies. And that might sound a little crazy because some people might say, hey, aren't Bible studies supposed to be Bible-based? But it's been my experience that um, a lot of Christianity is not Bible based, sadly. And what has crept in is a lot of errors, a lot of traditions, a lot of opinions. Um, and if we want to study the word, we have to go by what thus saith the Lord says. Um, Jesus in Matthew 4, 4 said, Man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So Jesus made it very clear that we're not supposed to go by traditions or opinions but by what thus saith the Lord. So again, the purpose of this um, ministry is specifically to look at um, distinctive um, Bible doctrines. How are we saved? What is sin? Uh, what is righteousness? Um, you know, are we saved by faith? Uh, do we have to obey God? You know, all these kind of things. And, um, and we're going to use the Bible to explain those things to us. And then we have to be convicted whether or not we believe what God says or do we want to go with our own opinions. So um, a little bit of background about myself. Um, I'm one of six kids, uh, born and raised in New York from immigrant parents from the Dominican Republic. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, times were not, you know, great at times, you know, we're, we're, we really didn't have much money at all, but God blessed us. He gave us, um, what we needed, praise be to God. And, uh, we had a loving, uh, family, my mother and father, very loving towards us and my siblings and I, uh, very close to one another. But again, there were challenges. And uh, my mother was a Catholic, so she did her best to try to raise us with some kind of religious background. And uh, she sent us to um, uh, the Catholic uh, sacramental classes and again, trying her best. But even as a child, I felt something was off when I was going into those classes and I can't put my finger on it. But now in hindsight, I, I, in studying the Bible as I have been doing, uh, I recognize what it was. And it, the feeling I had, even as a child, whether I was six, seven, eight, nine years old, so on and so forth, as I went through all the sacraments, I just felt that we were going through the motions, um, not necessarily building a relationship with Christ, but just meeting, uh, you know, traditions and uh, opinions of what the church said was, what was necessary, and necessary, excuse me, but not necessarily building a relationship that was Christ-centered. And one of the reasons why I personally feel that um, that was my, my experience was because uh, if I wanted to pray to God, for example, I had to go to the priest. I had to confess my sins. So I had to go to this man uh, in a confessional. I had to pray five Hail Marys. I had to pray to our fathers, which was very, um, very blah, very robotic, uh, I can say, very robotic. Um, there was a, a, a lack of personal, uh, personal touch. It felt very, very cold and stark. And uh, in hindsight, now I know why I had that feeling, because um, the Bible um, clearly shows that we have direct access to God. Uh, we don't need to go to priest. We don't need to go to pastor. We don't need to go to mother or father. We don't need to go to Mary. We don't need to go to saints. We can go directly to Jesus. In 1 Timothy 2, 5, it says that Jesus is the mediator. He is the one that we can go through to see the Father. He, Jesus himself says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So he made it very clear that we go through him. So uh, growing up again, I just had a, a, a bad taste in my mouth. And I, after I went through the sacraments and I did the uh, uh, confirmation, which is the last one, uh, anyone who's Catholic um, can relate to what I'm talking about. I was raised Catholic, not maybe not Catholic any longer, but was raised Catholic. And uh, I went through those motions. Again, I still felt a void, but I kind of pushed it aside. You know, I was going into high school at that point. High school is tough for everybody. I know it was tough for me. I'm sure uh, maybe you guys would agree with me, whoever's watching. And um, I just felt that, you know, God was not really in my picture. I wasn't necessarily praying to God. Um, I felt there was a higher being, but who this person was, I really didn't really know, to be honest with you. Um, I tried reading the Bible once as a teenager, and I said, I'm going to make a commitment, and I'm really going to study the Bible from start to finish. And when I hit Genesis, 
it was like hitting a ton of bricks. I, I, I went through some difficult passages that didn't really make sense. And to be fair, I was reading it more like I would read any other book um, and not realizing this is a spiritual book and we have to go about it very differently than we would read, you know, a secular book. Um, but, I, you know, I failed at doing that in, in my younger years. And eventually I went through high school and then into college. And uh, in college, my first couple years in college, um, I was doing well in school, um, you know, a student, um, not a bad looking guy, physically fit. I was working out, um, you know, and life looked OK from the outside. But internally, I felt there was a void and I didn't know what that void was, but there was a lot of dark feelings I had in me. And this is when I was about 19 or 20 going, going on 20. And I just felt that there was something missing, but I couldn't put my finger on it. And I don't know if some of you guys can relate to what I'm talking about, but there was something missing and I didn't know what it was. Again, school was good, family was fine. You know, I'm sure we were going through struggles like any other family was, but nothing out of the ordinary. But I just felt there was a void internally inside, inside me and I couldn't point the finger to it. So, um, you know, I actually had, um, uh, you know, a feeling of, you know, not necessarily seeing value in life anymore. I was thinking to myself, what is the point of life? Where am I going? And I even started contemplating, hey, does it really matter if I continue living? Um, you know, very, very dark thoughts. And uh, what's crazy is that within a few weeks of having these thoughts, because this was, this was uh, building up over time, after a few weeks of having these thoughts, um, I, I really got into a bad place mentally where I was feeling really dark. And then sadly, one day uh, I, I made a mistake. I, I took a, uh, a moped, the automatic uh, little motorcycle things and uh, with no insurance or nothing that belonged to my brother, uh, David. And uh, like an idiot, I was driving it at nine o'clock at night. It was drizzling that day, not going very fast, but um, long story short, I crashed. Uh, I woke up in the emergency room. I later found out as uh, I was laying on the, the bed um, in, the, in the ER room uh, that the doctor was touching my arm and asking me if I felt uh, my arm and I didn't feel anything. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't feel anything. And uh, he said, well, you just had an accident and you paralyzed your arm. You um, tore a nerve in your arm and you paralyzed it. And we don't know whether or not you'll be able to use this arm again. Um, start practicing becoming a lefty and i was shocked uh to say the least i thought it was a, a terrible dream i was hoping that i was going to wake up from it and eventually i saw my father come into the er and i saw his face and i knew this was not a dream and uh from there it was a downward spiral um i was discharged i was home um every day i would wake up uh thinking that again it was a nightmare i would wake up thinking that life was good again and i was back to normal and I would look at my arm and I would see it was torn up from the accident. I couldn't feel my arm, I couldn't move. Um, you know, very, very humbling um, time of my life and very dark time also, because now keep in mind, I was already in a dark position when things were good. Now I'm physically crippled. Uh, I'm dependent upon my brothers and my family members to help me with the simplest tasks, you know, taking showers, getting dressed. I could not do anything because I was disabled. Um, and I was just like, well, if I didn't like how things were before, I definitely don't like the way things are now. So I was, you know, having dark thoughts, even suicidal thoughts, to be completely honest. And some fam family or friends may see this and say, well, I didn't realize that. Those closest to me recognize that, like, you know, my brothers um, have heard me say this before. Um, and I just really had a dark time. And uh, in that darkness, I felt a need to seek out God, but I didn't know God, but I just, in my, my um, ignorance, um, prayed to God as I was taught to pray as best I could, trying to talk to Him. And I did feel a peace and I came to a realization. I said, well, one or two things are going to happen. Either you take your life and you say, hey, this is it. Life is over and there's no purpose for life anymore. Or you dust yourself off. You say, this is a growing pain that I have to go through and I need to move forward. And uh, praise be to God, after about a month of that dark state, I decided I would dust myself off and I would move forward. I went through therapy for about a year and a half, um, physical therapy, not mental therapy. The therapy I got mentally was straight from the Lord. And um, praise be to God, He cleaned me up, made my thoughts clear. I was starting to be able to use my hands a little bit. I still lost function in my shoulder, so even to this day, I can't necessarily lift up my arm. and. Um, I can write with it, but there's limitations, but that doesn't really make a difference. That's not the purpose of this testimony. 
Um, so from there, I, I was able to get a job in a bank. I worked my way up in the bank. Uh, eventually, within five years, I went from being a teller to a bank manager. So the Lord was blessing me. Um, no college degree in management, no college degree in finance, but the Lord blessed me and gave me an opportunity to move up the ranks. And within five years, I was a bank manager, doing well financially. During that same time, God blessed me with my, my love, my wife, who was across the street from me. God was very good. He put my wife right across the street from me um, and in my home. And, uh, you know, to, uh, to God's glory, uh, we met each other. We got married. We were blessed with two lovely kids. Um, but after a while, even though things were going well, um, I just felt again, uh, eventually, that void again was very stark. And again, financially things were well. Um, I was making very good money. Uh, my wife and I had just purchased our apartment. Um, we put a good down payment on it. I purchased a new car, you know, uh, a nice car. So everything was from the outside looking good again. But there was a void inside. And at this part in time, I was probably more of like, you know, agnostic where I believed in a higher being, but I, again, I didn't know who God was. And I had very, very um, reserved thoughts about the Bible. I would say things like, well, the Bible was written by men, you know, you can't take it seriously. It's uh, take it with a grain of salt, so on and so forth. And um, I kind of dismissed it. Um, but um, right around the time that my second son was born, he's, um, that was about five years ago, five and a half years ago, uh, I had a, a feeling again of this emptiness and I'll flip into the channels and I came through the History Channel and I just remember that on the History Channel, it must have been a time around Easter or so, and they had a, a, a one week series about the last week of Jesus and his ministry and uh, what he was doing in his outreach. And obviously at the end of that series, the, the very last day, was his crucifixion and i you know i just felt a pain in my heart not a void anymore but a pain and i felt i felt saddened that jesus um, died for me and i never uh, investigated it so i was at a crossroads i asked myself well benny you need to make a decision my wife was chirping in my ear saying benny you need to you know make a decision for the family are we going to raise our children christian or are we not what are we going to do we need god in our life and up to that point i was extremely resistant not a bad person, you know, but just a worldly person. I was just doing things for myself. I was selfish, um, involved with sports. That was my life, involved with, you know, everything except for God. Everything was about the world and, and nothing to do with God. Um, I wouldn't even invest, you know, maybe 10 seconds, I would say a quick prayer out of my 24 hour period. So obviously, how much could you really know someone if you only spend 10 seconds with them every day? Um, so I came to a point where I said, Benny, uh, you have to make a decision. And the decision I made was, if God is real, I need to see him and I need to figure out whether or not this Bible is legitimate. Because the Bible says in 2 uh, Timothy 3.16, all scripture is inspired by God. That's what it says. So the question is, I was asking myself, is it, and I didn't know these verses back then, but I was asking myself, is this really inspired by God or is this man-made? And um, what I decided to do was, um, at that same time, through God's providence, uh, my wife, came across a video which caught my attention. It was called, um, uh, what was it called again? It was called Why So Many Denominations or something along that side. And it caught my attention and I decided, hey, let me watch this. And, it, and again, I was, whoa, this is very interesting. I didn't know why this, there are so many Christian denominations. And from there, um, after a couple months, still being very you know inquisitive, but not fully bought in, I said, okay, Benny, that's it. I need to buy my own Bible. I don't want anyone's opinion. I don't want... Um, the, the pastor, the priest, the sister, the brother, the mother, I don't, the neighbor, I don't want any of their opinions. I'm going to get the Bible, and if God is real, and if it's supposedly inspired, then it's going to be um, very clear to me that he wrote this word, and it was inspired by God. So, I purchased a Bible, and I didn't know how to read the Bible, and I had to uh, use a study guide that would tell me, read Genesis 1 today, read John 1 today, read Psalms 1 today, and very humbly and ignorantly, I would read those and not necessarily get too much out of it. But after a while, I felt very convicted that this was not man-made. Uh, at this point, I was praying before I started studying the Bible, and that made a huge difference because before that, I wasn't praying. I was just opening it and saying, oh, I'm just going to read John. Like, I am in the book of John right now, one of my favorite chapters, um, favorite books, excuse me. So, I was reading um, very uh, ignorantly but humbly and I think in my ignorance God blessed me and started giving me a little bit of light, a little bit of light. 
And then eventually I started getting into the prophecies of the Bible. This is now we're into a, two, three months into it. Uh, and around that same time, um, sadly, my father passed away. I studied about what happens when you die and what the Bible really teaches about what, what happens when you die. Again, most Christianity doesn't have a good understanding of this because they've been taught or told by their pastors or their families. And it just seems like the right thing. Um, but the Bible is very clear on what happens when you die. Um, and uh, I studied that out and it gave me peace when my father passed away. Um, and from there, I just started studying all these things out and I started studying the prophecies in the book of Daniel, the prophecies spoken of in Revelation. Uh, and through God's providence, God bless myself and my wife with a friend. His name is Elvis. He started doing one-on-one -on -one Bible studies with us to help us. Um, he helped because, again, you, you can only go so far sometimes at the beginning because you still don't know where everything is within the Bible. So it's, it's, it's helpful to have someone who has more knowledge and can point to the Bible to specific verses. So that was a blessing to myself and my wife. And I was just gobbling it up. I was eating up the Word every day. And as I was more and more interested in the Bible, my interest in the worldly things started to go down, 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 down. And we all have 24 hours in a day. So there's a principle that I think we all need to live by, whether you believe in God or whether you don't. But time is the great equalizer, right? Time is the great equalizer. So whether you're a peasant, whether you're homeless, whether you're a billionaire, everyone lives in time. The only one that lives outside of time is God because he's eternal. But all us human beings, we live in time and time is finite. So how we use our time will dictate our relationship with God. It will dictate our relationship with our family members. It will dictate our relationship with our friends. It will dictate our relationships in, in, in its entirety. So once I started thinking about that, I, I made a decision. I need to start eliminating things from my life that are taking up time. And I started eliminating things from my life like sports and um, worldly television, whatever it might be, so that I can buy more time with my wife, more time with my children, and more time with my God. And once I started doing that, I was really blessed. Um, and uh, what happened was I was baptized within six months of getting into this study because I was convicted that God's word was true. And again, the prophecies really opened my eyes because there are prophecies spoken in the Bible that were written hundreds of years before they came into fruition, um, clearly um, confirmed through history. And when I saw that, I asked myself, how can a man know what would happen in the future, two, three, four, five, six hundred years in the future, and not even know it, but know it exactly, and exactly when it would take place, and the exact events that would take place. So I was convicted, and I hope you're convicted, that God is real, and I started looking at nature also, and seeing God's fingerprint throughout all nature. So with that being said, I was baptized in, um, as a Christian. Praise God, my wife was baptized with me, and I was blessed to even have my brother um, baptized with me at the same time and from there I really started getting into um, worshiping God you know once a lot of people get baptized they kind of get lax they think they've graduated and that's the end of it but I felt the need to really start studying more and more and I was studying for myself and what I also started doing is giving people Bible studies no matter how little I knew I knew hey I need to share this this is great news this is the gospel right the gospel is the good news so I was sharing with my brothers and sisters, sharing with my friends, sharing with my coworkers, sharing with whoever, a neighbor off the street. It made no difference to me. I was sharing with them and I started doing Bible studies with people and it grew from a few people uh, to eventually we were holding Bible studies in my previous church in New York, which had, uh, we would have 10, 20, 30, 40 people in a Bible study. And again, going extensively through the Bible and seeing what the, the truth says. And it was an open Bible study where everybody had an opportunity to share and look for answers, again, in Scripture. Not through opinions, not through, I think this says that, and my opinion is more important than yours. But what does the Bible say, not just in one verse, but from Genesis to Revelation? It has to be uh, cohesive. That's something I learned, that there's a thread that runs through the Bible. And whether you read Genesis 1 or Revelation 22, which is the last book of the Bible, they're all cohesive. They don't con uh, contradict one another. So... What happens with a lot of Christians is that we'll pick one verse and we'll make a doctrine out of that. We'll say, well, here you go. This verse says this, not looking at not just the verse, but the context of the chapter, the context of the book, the context of the Bible, and then saying, well, how does this, this exegesis, um, which is studying it out here and there and see if it all combines and is all, you know, um, copacetic with one another, 
like how how does this verse play into the the whole scripture because again all scripture is inspired by god the bible says so if it's inspired by god it cannot contradict and what i found is typically not typically definitively the contradictions are always with man not with god and usually man is uh how do we put this uh confused let's just say confused or ignorant you know but god says in uh, the the book of uh, Acts 17 he goes and the times of this ignorance god winked at but now commandeth all men to repent. And that's in the book of Acts chapter uh, 17. At least if it's verse 30 or 31, one or the other. And um, so I was convicted to start giving Bible studies. And I've been doing that for the past four or five years. And, um, and I've been blessed by it. Uh, I've been a blessing to others. And I've had a lot of people ask me, Hey, Benny, why don't you start giving Bible studies to people? Which is why we began this ministry. We've been doing one-on-one -on -one Bible study with people for some time. But we, we were asked to do it online as well, and that's why we're here today. So, Seal of the Living God is going to be a ministry based on the Bible. It's going to be a ministry to point to what the Bible says, not just in one verse, but cohesively throughout the Bible. We'll try to keep it to 30 minutes or less, and it might be um, part one or part two, depending on if it's an extensive study or not. Uh, we'll also um, take requests. So, if somebody has a request, let's say you have a question on, you know, when you die, what's the judgment look like? Or what is this thousand years that Revelation talks about? Uh, what did Jesus mean that there's going to be a first resurrection and a second resurrection? Uh, what is the seal of God? You know, that's the name of the ministry. What does that mean? You know, what is the character of God? You know, uh, do I need to obey the Lord? Is, or is it okay because Jesus paid it all for me? So we'll touch on all these things. And again, we'll take questions via email. Uh, but for today, I just wanted to share uh, one, uh, my background, where I came from, where I'm at today. And in the next part, part two, what I hope to share with you is how the Lord um, did a wonderful work and the next step that we had in our experience once we were baptized and how we had prayed to the Lord to call us out of the city and move closer to the country. We took step one and now we're looking to take another step in the future. So that'll be part two. Uh, we're going to post that as well. And I hope it's a blessing to you. Um, if you like this video, like it, please um, uh, subscribe to the channel. If you're um, impo if you are uh, impressed to, um, you feel a conviction to, again, we're going to keep this very uh, personal. I'm not looking to make this stuffy in any way. And uh, we'll post the videos continually. And again, keep your eye out for video number two. God bless you all. Thank you for being with us today. I hope to see you uh, very soon. Blessings.